it rained my soul. I died again, get ready, my soul. I died again to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Southeast Louisiana. I'm Reverend Larry Marie Heil, the spiritual director here, and we are a group of radically inclusive spiritual renegades, healing hearts, and creating community. And we live from a place of conscious spiritual living so that we can encourage everyone to live in enthusiastic expectancy of their abundance and of their good. And we pause today to honor all our fathers, whether they birthed a child, were fatherly to someone, never had those opportunities. And as you will hear in the message, all of us, women and men alike, can be fatherly. Today, we're blessed to have Dr. Reverend Larry King with a fabulous message about fathers. I know you're going to enjoy his message and how he teaches each of us to love without reservation. So stay with us as we learn what it takes to truly be fatherly on this planet. Let's begin with prayer. Hmm. The presence of spirit, that infinite intelligence, that profound love of the divine is right here, right now the source and the substance of everything, and the essence of that presence, the joy, the love, the freedom, the ease, is the raw material that is me and the raw material that is each of us today. That presence is all that I am and all that I choose to be. I know that God is flowing in, through, and as each of us, and we are here today by a divine appointment to hear something, either in the message or the music, maybe even in the little movie clip, in a quote, or all of the above, that is going to make a difference and help us to cultivate a more meaningful relationship with the divine. So I'm so happy and grateful to remember this truth that the God without is the God within each of us. And I just release these words into that law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing it's already been done, so I can say amen, and we can affirm it together. And so it is. And since today is about being fatherly, and being fatherly is really about loving. This song reminds us that loving is a choice. Sing along with our CSL music team as they sing, Love is My Decision.
our time for celebration and healing. Our time in our service where we celebrate life and we pray for people who desire prayer. We begin with celebration, so I invite you to say aloud so that the whole universe can hear it, any event in your life for which you're grateful and joyful this week. And now we turn to the healing portion of our service. We're a community steeped in healing. So we pause now to pray for anyone who's not feeling the joy of life that we perhaps were just feeling. They're not feeling maybe that they have things to celebrate. And I truly love this part of our service because it's so in alignment with who we are. So let's pray. God is all there is. God is that love and that peace and ease and grace and freedom and so much more. And as an individual expression of the divine, each of us have within us all of these qualities of spirit. They're available to us right here and right now. And what I know to be the truth is that there are people on this planet right now that aren't embracing those qualities. So we stop for a moment and we create a circle of love. And in this community, we place in that circle of love anyone that we recognize within ourselves or for someone else that might need prayer. So I'm gonna pause and I just invite you to say aloud the names of all of those people that you wanna include in our circle of love. I know that God is right where each of us happens to be, right here and right now, moving in through and as each of us. And I know that the divine has heard every name that we spoke, either in our hearts or aloud. And what I'd like you to do now is pause again. And from your heart to all of theirs, just send out love, knowing that the divine knows exactly how to distribute it. And what I know to be the truth is that anything that needs to be released within each of these people is being released now, be it disease of the mind, of the body, of the soul. I know that anything that's seeking to come forth and be lifted up can be lifted up. And that this release and this lifting up is healing whatever's called to be healed. I know that each of these people is feeling more deeply their connection with the divine right now. I have evidence of that, and I know it to be the truth for everyone that we place in our circle. So I'm so grateful to know that the God without is the God within me. The God without is the God within every person in our circle, every person in this community, and every person on this planet. And I'm grateful for that power of community prayer and what it means to the uplifting of the people on this planet. So it's from all that gratitude that I release this prayer into the law of mind, spirit, and action. Because I know that the divine, in all of its wisdom, has already called all of this good. Any heavy lifting that needs to be done to heal whatever needs to be healed, the divine is already taken care of. So I can just know it's already done, say amen, and together we can affirm it. And so it is. I invite you to join me for our community affirmation. My life's purpose is already within me and I am committed to its unfoldment. I am here by divine appointment to join in a community that cares for one another, to be in a place that transforms people's lives, to remember the highest truth about myself to learn spiritual tools for personal transformation, and thus to make the world a more joyful place. So this is our time for meditation. We let go of the involvement with the outside world. The past is gone, the future is not here yet. And we allow ourselves to settle into this holy instant in time. 
And as we breathe, we just notice the rise and fall of our chest. If it's comfortable, you might like to shut your eyes. And I invite you to settle into that place within you, that place of silence where you can feel the divine, where you can feel the power of the divine flowing through you as you. And I suggest you just relax into your breathing and listen, trusting your heart to tell you the truth of who you are. And when the silence of the meditation is over, sing along with the music team as they sing, Oh, let this great power. Imagine someone that could see the light in you. Think of a person in your life who showed you what it meant to allow that power to move through you. Perhaps because it's Father's Day, you may be thinking of your dad or a special person in your life who imparted to you the wisdom that you are courageous, that you are strong, that you can do what you know is right. And remember the times that you embraced that strength, that you did just that, that you saw your own light and let it shine. Perhaps even when something was unpopular. Do you remember how that felt afterwards? Today in the silence, let's remember our ancestors and all of those who gave us the courage to stand up for who we are and what we believe so that we can create a world that's filled with love and compassion.
So let's return from the silence. Bring back with you any lessons that came up. And remember that sense of surrendering to the power that washes through you. That power that dwells in you and allows you to release any fear and to remember not to wonder what you have to say or to do, to just stand in the knowing of who you are, to stand in speaking your own truth, because that is perfection in action. everyone. So glad to be back with you. Uh, Reverend Larry invited me to be here for Father's Day, and I have a lot of interesting stuff to say, but first I want to start with a Father's Day reading. Uh, it's from the poet Lee Young Lee, and I think I need to explain a little bit about Mr. Lee. Uh, Lee Young Lee was born in Jakarta, Indonesia in 1957 to Chinese political exiles. Lee's great-grandfather was the first president of the Republic of China. Lee's father had been the personal physician to Mao Zedong, yet anti-Chinese sentiment began to foment. And Lee's father was arrested, held as a political prisoner. And finally, after his relief, the Lee family fled through Hong Kong, Macau, and Japan, arriving in the United States in 1964. What's interesting, Lee is now considered one of America's greatest living poets. And I chose this particular poem. It's called The Gift. I chose it because it explains my idea of fatherhood, I think. And it's the invitation to be a good father out in the world, even if you don't have kids. And so let me read uh, the poem for you as an honoring of all of the fathers that we're celebrating today on Father's Day. The Gift. To pull the metal splinter from my palm, my father recited a story to me in a low voice. I watched his lovely face and not the blade. Before the story ended, he'd removed the iron sliver I thought I might die from. Well, I can't remember the tale, but I hear his voice still, a well of dark water, a prayer. And I recall his hands, two measures of tenderness he laid against my face, the flames of discipline he raised above my head. Had you entered that afternoon, you would have thought you saw a man planting something in a boy's palm, a silver tear, a tiny flame. And had you followed that boy, you would have arrived here, where I now bend over my wife's right hand. Look how I shave her thumbnail down, so carefully she feels no pain. Watch as I lift the splinter out. I was seven when my father took my hand like this, and I did not hold that shard between my fingers and think, 
metal that will bury me or christen it little assassin. And I did not lift up my wound and cry, death visited here. No, I did what a child does when he's given something precious to keep. I kissed my father. What a fabulous way to start a message about fathers. When we are truly in father mode, we love always. And this song by Karen Mitchell sums it up quite nicely. Sing along with her as she sings, Love is the Answer. I can cry about my day Say everything went wrong No one sings their song my way Or I can laugh about my day The good it really brought me The patience you taught me Each step of the way Love is the answer Whatever the lesson Love is the answer Whatever way we choose to live Love is the answer Love is the like to thank Reverend Larry for providing such a wonderful reading. Wow, it was beautiful, wasn't it? And thanks also to Karen Mitchell, as well as our CSL music team, for our beautiful music today, which supports the message. And today, as we continue our wonderful 2024 spiritual journey, we have this beautiful message from Dr. Reverend Larry King, who is an accomplished minister, and he speaks from his heart and brings clarity to topics. I know you're going to love his message, Father of the Bride, and you are the Bride. But before I turn it over to him, here's your question for the week. What is the one choice you might make today to love without reservation, 
to listen deeply and to launch those you love so that they can spread their wings. One more time. What is the one choice you might make today to love without reservation, to listen deeply and to launch those you love so they can spread their wings? So happy Father's Day, everyone. Big shout out to my friends at CSL Southeast Louisiana. I'm Larry King from Tidewater, Oregon, the other Larry, and I thank her for the opportunity to speak with you today. Now, when she asked me to speak on Father's Day, I decided I needed to do some research. And I'll be honest here, the relationship that I had with my own father and stepfather was not all that great. And I'm thinking, well, who am I to talk about fatherhood? Who am I to portray this uh, ideal of fatherhood or to celebrate fathers? And so I decided that where I normally go on a topic I'm less than uh, 100% on is doing some research. And so uh, on to research, when I thought of the best example of fatherhood, I immediately thought of the 1991 classic movie, Father of the Bride, starring Steve Martin. I used to think a wedding was a simple affair. Boy and girl meet, they fall in love, they say I do. I was wrong. That's getting married. A wedding is an entirely different proposition. You fathers will understand. You have an adorable little girl who looks up to you and adores you in a way you could never have imagined. Dad, I met a man in Rome and we're getting married. I'm sorry, what did you say? I'm engaged, I'm getting married. <laughs> right then, I realized my day had passed. Annie, it's a little nippy out. You might want to put on a sweater. Oh, Dad, it's okay. I'm kind of warm. So there's a chill in the air, and you've been on a plane. Dad, I'm fine. Well, Annie, it is kind of cold out. It is? Yeah. All right, thanks. I'll get my jacket. Right. I was no longer the man in my little girl's life. Old dad was history. If I remember seeing someone who looked like Brian's twin on America's Most Wanted. First, the wedding of our children. Wedding coordinator? What's a wedding coordinator? We're gonna color coordinate with the swans, right? Swans? I have a great idea where we can have this wedding. Where? The steak pit. I don't think you want the word pit. Wedding invitation. I hope George didn't get lost up there. He's gonna be fine. Finally, the big day arrived. The day I'd been dreading for the past six months. Well, actually, for the past 22 years. Before I knew it, I had to let her go. Good, I'll just uh, go ahead. I'm told that one day I'll look back on all of this with great affection and nostalgia. I'd hope so. Good night, Mr. Banks. Drive carefully. And don't forget to fasten your condom. Dad! Seatbelt, I meant. So I hope you will appreciate my scholarly research today, having watched a movie. <laughs> or re-watched a movie, anyway. So as I uh, saw it for another time... It was easy to see why Steve Martin's character represented that perfect father to me. It's easy why uh, 33 years later, that movie still stood out to me as perhaps the kind of family environment I would have liked to have had, or certainly the kind of father that I would like to have. And uh, I, I want to delineate a little bit about Steve Martin's character, because it seems to me there were two things, uh, three things, really, that he did extremely well. Uh, he loved, he listened. And he launched. He loved, he listened, and he launched. So let me uh, talk about those in more detail uh, to tease out what great fathering is. Well, first of all, he loved his kids. He loved them without reservation. He loved them without a requirement for perfection, which is something that I had felt in my own family. It seemed to me that my father expected me to be a certain way. And Steve Martin, not so much. He he loved his daughter. He loved his children without any requirement for being a certain way or meeting a certain standard. It was just love. And third of all, and here's the magic, honestly, of movie making. Um, you could just see the light in his eyes whenever he looked at one of his kids in the movie. He simply uh, had that glow about him as a reflection of how he felt about his kids, and in particular, the daughter that's getting married. 
And, you know, my experience with neither my uh, father or stepfather was like that. Um, I, I mean, I'm sure they loved me in their way, but it certainly was not without reservation. It certainly had a requirement to fit a certain kind of mold or to be a certain kind of young man. And so, uh, and so truly this idea of unconditional love, so very important. The second characteristics of a great father uh, that's evidenced in this movie is listening. Now, when Steve Martin uh, first gets to meet his intended uh, son-in-law, well, first of all, it's a huge shock. It, it's like they're already engaged and he's never met the young man. He doesn't even know uh, that there is an engagement. And so in the beginning, Steve Martin is all about, you know, this marriage is not going to happen. This wedding is not going to happen. Uh, my daughter is moving much too fast. Who is this young man? You know, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure I keep my daughter safe, which I suppose also is the significance of love, right? He wanted to protect his daughter from making a bad mistake, but he listened to her. And as the subsequent scenes play out, you see that he, he brings his own mind around to thinking about his daughter and what she needs and what she wants and what this marriage will mean to her. He really listened to her on that deep level and came around to see that this was going to be a good thing. Okay. Um, you know, that reminds me, though, of a, another bit of research I did a few years ago. A few years ago, I was doing a, a series on, around uh, Christmas time. And one of the things that I researched was, well, what do kids really want from their parents? Uh, and, and it was interesting. You would think it was uh, iPhones. You would think it was, uh, I don't know, video games and things like that. And of course, those were on the list. Don't get me wrong. Um, those things were definitely on the list. But what kids mostly wanted was that their parents to spend quality time to them and really listen. Listening is such a rare gift. The listening that Steve Martin displayed in this movie, the listening that uh, parents can do for their children, it makes all the world of difference. All right, the third characteristics of a great father uh, is the launch. And I got to explain this, right? Uh, the love, the listening, and the launch. You know, parents have the capability of never letting go of their children. And, and I'm sure you know people, maybe you're one of them, uh, where you go to visit your parents. You're fully an adult now. You're 35 years old. You go to visit your parents. And suddenly you feel like you're five years old again. They treat you in a certain way. You uh, correspond in a certain Well, what's happened is you never really got launched. You were never really freed from being the adolescent into adulthood. And that was the third thing that was so powerful in this movie. Uh, Steve Martin's character was really able to launch his daughter into marriage, really releasing her into marriage and the adult life that she deserved and, and his deserving of being able to have her as a friend and equal as well as a daughter. He didn't try to hold her back. He didn't try to make the marriage about him. He was there to love and support and also to release. There's a lovely scene in there, the basketball scene, where uh, it's really tugging at his heartstrings, right? Because basketball was something he used to do with her uh, from when she was a, a young person. And, and here she is, you know, embarking upon uh, a marriage and they talk back and forth, you know, is this going to be the last basketball game they ever have? Does her leaving home mean that he's going to be left behind? It's such a touching scene, but what's clear is the launch doesn't mean a, a final goodbye. It really is a change. It's really just one of those wonderful parts of life where a relationship will undergo a significant change, but it's a change based in love, not based in fear. Well, as a side note, uh, you know, this movie is 33 years old. It seems like yesterday that I first watched it, but it's 33 years old. And I had to ask myself, is that vision, that 33-year-old vision of a father still realistic? And I, I decided that the answer was yes, uh, but I need to talk about that a little bit. I think I have to expand 
my idea of fathership to include women. All of the qualities that I treasure about a wonderful father that were so beautifully shown in that uh, film would not be exclusive to man. All of us can be better fathers. All of us can be a fathering influence to the people that we care about. All of us can love without reservation. All of us can love without a requirement for perfection or showing up a certain way. All of us can love with a light in our eyes when we look at our friends and our families and, and yes, our kids. Uh, it isn't something that is a, just a, a male attribute. And, and so I wanted to ask a question of you or, or questions, I guess. Do you have what it takes to be a good father? Do you have an interest in being a good father? Can you love without reservation? Can you love the people around you without requiring them to be a certain way? Can you really listen to people when they need you? Can you hold on to your loved ones loosely so that they can be released to find their own way in life? And you notice I'm not just talking about kids at this point. Can we have that kind of relationship with the world? Can we be that, that best fathering influence on the world? Well, I think with some spiritual practice and self-awareness, I think we can. I think you will make a wonderful father of the bride. But wait, before I finish, there's one more thing. Can't we also be the bride? Don't we deserve to be treated with love, with the listening, with the good parenting that Steve Martin's character had for his kids? Well, of course we can. Um, now you might be saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, uh, I can't change my past. My father was, well, he was my father and he was the way he was and I can't change how he behaved. Well, I agree, but we can change how we think about our fathers and we can take a chance at reparenting ourselves. So what does that look like exactly? Well, first of all, we can change how we think about our fathers. We're not apt to be a good fatherly influence if our opinion of fathers is negative. So first of all, the idea of forgiveness to some fathers that were maybe not as skillful as they could be. And that can release in us that desire and that willingness to be a good parent, to have a fathering influence that is positive out in the world. So forgiveness might be required if our own impressions of fatherhood are sort of tainted. And again, keep in mind my new idea of fatherhood, that, that fathering influence, that, that loving without reservation and so on includes women. So, uh, so first of all, some forgiveness might be involved, but more important than that, I think we treat others how often we treat ourselves. And so when I suggest that you might be the father of the bride, you might also be the bride, but it depends upon how you think about yourself. If we can begin treating ourselves well with the same love, listening, careful consideration that we've learned, uh, make up a good father. If we treat ourselves well, I believe the universe will respond. When we believe that we deserve to be treated well, when we, when we deserve that glorious wedding with life, spirit will make sure that the right fatherly influence come our way it's not too late to be launched into a better life. It's not too late to have the best relationship, the best job, or the best retirement. The father of the bride can be us, and the bride can be us too. So to summarize today, we've talked a little bit about the idea of what it means to be a good father. We've explored the notion that fatherhood doesn't have to be gendered that we can all be that light, that love, that uh, listener, that good launcher. We can be all of those things to our children, to our friends, uh, to, uh, to, to the people that matter to us. We can be that loving presence in the world. And lastly, we talked a little bit about the idea of reparenting, that just because our own experience with fathers has not been as good, not as ideal as we would like, and we can do something about that. We can start by forgiving ourselves and our fathers, uh, and we can end by reparenting if necessary. 
treating ourselves with the love that we would have liked to have been treated as a child, treating ourselves with that, uh, that sweetness and tenderness that we would like. And so I want to close um, with a prayer today, uh, but also a bit of uh, homework. Homework first. Um, so what I would like you to do this week is notice, first of all, how you're treating other people. Are you treating them like the Steve Martin character? And if you haven't seen the movie, by the way, it's lovely. I would encourage you to uh, rent it or uh, or watch it. Uh, I think it really does portray a father at at both his worst and his best, and uh, and and it's worth seeing. So, how are you treating the people in your lives? That's what I would like you to see for homework this week. Is it with that idea of love without reservation? Is it without requiring them to be a certain thing for you or do a certain thing or be a certain way? Uh, is uh, uh, Are you treating them with a light in your eyes when you just think of them? And then uh, the other part of the homework, if you're willing, uh, is maybe to look inward. How are you treating yourself? Are you treating yourself well? Are you treating yourself like that idealized father figure? Are you treating yourself with the love that you deserve and the kindness that you deserve? So two-part homework, if you're willing, I think it would be good homework. And I think it would require a little bit of introspection as well. Okay, on with our closing prayer. Uh, there is one part of me that knows that everything in the universe is connected. There is only one light. There's only one love. There is only uh, one thing, and it's God. And what I know about this God is that above all, it is loving. It treats all of us with such love, without reservation, without a requirement to be a certain way. There is a light in spirit when it looks upon us because we are of spirit. It is God affirming in itself when it wishes for the best for all of us. And so on this day, I internalize that love. I, I know that I'm worthy of being treated well. I know that there is a, I don't know, you might think of it as a heavenly father, although again, an ungendered one that is there to support me and guide me and treat me with such love and dignity and respect. And this, this is true for me. Uh, I know that it can be true for the people I come in contact with, that I can treat them with that same measure of love and dignity, as well as knowing that, that God treats them equally, that there is that divine fatherhood at play here, that sweetness of life that is so freely given to all of us, whether we're a man, whether a woman, whether we have kids or not, it is spirit's pleasure to be that wonderful influence in our lives. And it can be our pleasure to treat others with that same kindness, that same love, that same desire to really hear what's going on, that desire to really love, listen, and to launch also, to have that commitment to one another be loosely held uh, so that we're not holding people back. And so I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for the knowledge. I'm grateful for the movie that I got to see again and grateful for writing this talk and having a truly greater understanding of what it means to be a father and to be that fathering influence in the world. And so in gratitude, I release this prayer. I release it into the activity and action of the law itself. I let it be. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you so much for joining me this Sunday. I just adore Reverend Larry's sweet nature that shows up in all of his talks. Didn't you enjoy how he made us both the father and the bride? It was such a brilliant way to remind us that we can all be fathers. I hope you will take his challenge to heart. And since he did such a beautiful prayer, let me just take this time to remind you of your affirmation for the week. How is it I so willingly and effortlessly love without reservation, listen deeply, and launch those I love so they can spread their wings? 
And I want to add a little challenge of my own. Call someone who fathered you by loving you without reservation or by listening deeply to what you had to say or by helping you to truly launch into your own greatness and tell them thank you. As always, I want to be grateful for all of the people and all the contributions that have been coming in. They're helping us to continue to have special music and special events and to begin to search for a new home. Enjoy our offertory song. Find all of the information for donating at our website at cslsoutheastla.org. You can use the donate button there, or you can use Zella or Venmo at 225-287-8887. You can text your amount to 1-225-320-5100, or you can mail your donation to CSL Southeast Louisiana, care of Reverend Larry Marie Heil, 445 Magnolia Wood Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70808. We thank you for your tithes and donations, and we appreciate the fact that you are giving gifts that are flowing out to everyone we touch. And with such a delightful message about fathers and being fatherly, this song is the perfect way to wrap up our service. Enjoy our CSL music team as they sing, There is Only Love. Oh 
Returning to our series on Michael Singer's book, Living Untethered, The Human Predicament and Beyond, and we're delving into part six, which also happens to be called The Human Predicament and Beyond. In these chapters, Singer addresses the fundamental challenges and constraints that define human experience. And he provides practical guidance on how to let go of attachments and surrender to the flow of life. And by doing so, we can move beyond that human predicament and experience a deeper sense of peace and fulfillment. So join us next week as we continue to explore how to live untethered. Hope to see you there. Thank you for joining us today. I invite you to like us on Facebook at Center for Spiritual Living Southeast Louisiana. And please follow us on our YouTube channel at CSLSELA. And it's just about time to join in our community time, which is a live discussion that follows the service every Sunday at 1145 a.m. You have a little bit of time to go get a cup of coffee or some tea and then dial into our conference line. The number is 540 792 0192. And the participation code is 475-220. We hope you'll join us. And in closing, remember, Disney claims to be the happiest place on earth, but we at the Center for Spiritual Living know that we are the most joyful. So until we meet again, may you be wrapped in the arms of love and kindness. And may you remember to love without reservation, to listen deeply, and to launch those you love so they can spread their wings and fly to their highest potential. I absolutely know that you enjoyed Reverend Larry's message as much as I did. And when we step fully into acting from that place within us that is love without reservation, what I know is, the love comes bounding back to us multiplied abundantly, and we feel very much alive. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My spirit is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My spirit.